It is the third conversation that we're having in this month where the theme of our conversations is the encouragers, people who speak life into the lives of others. And for this conversation to take place, I was tracking the life of Juliet Casita and I caught up with her and we had a phone conversation towards this and it was very instructive. Juliet Nachimuli Casita is the country director or country manager for Sinapis Group Uganda, a global Christian organization organization blending intensive entrepreneurship training with faith-based principles and access to capital. She is a graduate of Makere University, Uganda, and has over 18 years experience in ICT service delivery, business operations, and entrepreneurship development in the banking, microfinance, and telecom industries. Juliet is also the founder of Winpreneurs Africa, a collaborative community platform helping women to start and run scalable, sustainable enterprises. She is a certified financial literacy trainer, business consultant and mentor for business development projects with individuals, companies, schools, governments, and NGOs. Juliet is married to Henry and they have a daughter, Ariana. She loves reading, supporting her church ministry, traveling, networking, and charitable causes. And oh yeah, she also enjoys a good laugh over a cup of tea. Listen guys, you wanna listen to this. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Life Signatures episodes are brought to you by AfricanBooks.com, which is an online ebook platform that seeks to broadcast the African Christian voice to the world. As such, they have become a hub for African content, connecting African writers and publishers with a global reading audience. Publishing your books on their site is free and easy, with authors having full control over their content and the price they choose to sell at it. I was personally blown away by the concept that AfricanBooks.com is coming up with. Things like no content from their site or their app is going to be run on laptops so that people can easily copy. In other words, your content as a writer is restricted from digital multiplication or digital copying. So you remain intact with your information. Another concept that I got so blown away with was the fact that in some time to come, in due course, AfricanBooks.com will be starting to announce African Writer of the Year. In other words, there will be competitions in all African countries to figure out who is the best published author. And I also fell in love with the fact that countries can actually compete against each other. You can have African authors going at it after each other. And your book as an author will be reviewed and have some stars and recommended upon that particular platform. The thing is that it's an answer to Amazon.com. You know, with Amazon, what happens? You've got to have an account in the Americas or whatever, or in Europe before you can get paid as an author. But here, the local currency is in play and the local means of getting paid 
are in play. So to get started, go to africanbooks.com as an author or as a publisher and even as a reader if you wanted to read your African favorite authors. Enjoy. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, whatever place it is that you are listening to Life Signatures Radio. This has been uh, a very exciting journey so far, and I'm so glad that uh, we are having this conversation in this month. We have been talking to people who are encouragers, people who are in the business or the calling or the industry, whatever name you want to give it of encouraging other people, inspiring them, equipping them, speaking into their spirits, speaking into their lives so that they can be better human beings. And today on the call, I'm actually doing a call on this episode today. I have my guest who is roaming around East Africa. Juliet, how are you doing? I'm fine, Lawrence. How are you? I'm okay. Where are you right now? Uh, currently, I'm in Nyeri, uh, in Kenya, yeah. the side of Mount Kenya, okay. trying to do some work with some entrepreneurs. What's happening there? Um, I don't know if you've heard, I happen to be the country manager for Synapis, yeah. and uh, definitely uh, what Synapis does is that um, we are a global community of faith-driven entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. and um, what we do is that we provide intensive training with faith-based principles and access to capital. Our entrepreneurs are faith-driven entrepreneurs that grow companies and and transform the world. So Synapis is in Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda and Burundi and I happen to be working with a couple of the entrepreneurs that are in the side of East Africa. So you you like head the one in Uganda? Yes, please. I oversee the operations of Synapis Uganda. Meanwhile, there are other Synapis uh, presidents or heads in the in Kenya, in in Burundi, in Rwanda, right? Yes, we we are currently in twelve countries. Yeah. So we have presence in a couple of us and. Uh, there are different uh, um, support teams that are supporting the different uh, countries where we have presence. Okay. So like when we spoke last, I think the other time you were traversing East Africa. So far, how many countries in East Africa have you visited through Synapis? Uh, through Synapis alone or personally as a person? Okay, let's just say personally, <laughs> generally. How many East African countries? Personally, I think I've been in all, personally, I've uh, been to, I think currently, um, around 12 African countries. Yeah. But with Synapis, with Synapis, I've only been in three of Whoa. their countries. That's Uganda, Kenya, and Rwanda. We don't have presence in Tanzania as yet. Okay. So, which country do you prefer? <laughs> don't tell me Uganda. I do definitely will tell you Uganda East or West home is best. Yeah. And um, I I have a heart for Uganda, a deeply rooted heart for my country. Okay. And the work that we do that is around entrepreneurs, definitely I would want to offer it to my own entrepreneurs in Uganda. I see. Second best? Second best would be Rwanda. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I feel I, hard. I thought you would say in Kenya. There's there's a lot. There's a lot. There are totally many people that could do what I'm doing here in Kenya as well. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, mm, definitely I think it would be my country and then next um Rwanda. And yeah, finally maybe Nairobi. Okay. That's it. So yeah. how how did you how did you become the head of Synapis in um Uganda. Did did that 
it happen as something you plan to do or it just came along the way while you're busy they normally say life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans how, how did it uh, come about <laughs> interesting interesting it's, it's a funny story that i keep talking about so i actually came into synapses as an entrepreneur Whoa. so what happened in um 2017 late 2017 getting into early 2018 mm-hmm. i took a decision uh, a personal decision to transition from my career um that I actually uh, pursued for I would say at that time it was uh, for the last 12 years yeah um to 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 definitely venture into the entrepreneurship world but most importantly I think for me I was trying to also take a sabbatical and get to know more of who I was mm. so um apparently um in 2018 I was talking to a friend of mine I don't know if you've heard about um a lady called Joan Mugenzi yeah actually so, Joan Mugenzi was the the person that started off this month's conversations <laughs> about oh, em- people who empower others so I'm not surprised that you guys are uh, ended up here on this show Oh really so and anyway, yeah. this is what happened uh-huh. so I I had been um uh like a part-time associate trainer with Imagine Me Africa yeah um and and it's also a role that came from my desire to learn more so Joan used to do some master classes some business uh clinics and all these other personal development uh trainings yeah. through Imagine Me yeah. and I, and I found myself going for many of those sessions mm-hmm. so we actually started building on each other and I think I found more of me in Joan she she's actually a good person when it comes to encouragement mm-hmm. but she's someone who you know kind of um, pursue you to the next level if i could say yeah. so we had a couple of conversations i had just read her book uh, corporate at crossroads i had just been i think in that moment i was a corporate at a crossroad i was transitioning from a well paying job uh, 12 years of experience and all these other things to now come and uh, definitely Definitely pursue a new life for me. So what happens? Um, I think at that time it was more of accountability. So we were having a conversation, yeah. and I was just sharing a bit of what had happened. I, ha- I have another story for another day around how I had also transitioned a certain passion into a business, and we were having these conversations. But I remember Joan told me mm-hmm. that um, oh, there's this place I have just been doing their um, entrepreneur. entrepreneurship training skill and um, this particular place will be able to give you a soft landing when mm-hmm. it comes to business mm-hmm. and uh, she told me about the, the the course and i think one of the things that she mentioned it was that the fact that it was also kingdom business related so me and joan are people of faith we go to the same church and then i was like okay maybe i'll try it out but the interesting thing is mm-hmm. that when she when she she talked about it and then sent me the link and i never applied so in the repetitive meetings where we we used to do the trainings she kept asking me oh did you apply and then i remembered oh my goodness i didn't apply so on this particular day i just got that link and said i'm going to apply so that next time she asks me i have a positive answer remember she's your accountability person yeah. she will keep coming back so i went and applied and the rest is history so i <laughs> came here did the <laughs> did the training i did the training um like i said uh, early 2018 yeah. um the leader in me when i got into my class i remember they said um can you please nominate um a, a class pa like a class part participant by that time synapse had not set office in in uganda they were sending trainers from kenya mm-hmm. and doing trainings only on weekends uh, for a particular month so i just put up my hand and said oh i'm here i'll do that mm-hmm. and then you know one thing led to another i used to coordinate the trainers coming in book where they are going to stay in sure their transport is handled make sure my, the students my fellow peers in the class had their manuals had the links online you know all that logistics that goes around having an efficient class mm-hmm. i mean you know yeah so i did that i did it we did the class for four months because it's 16 weeks 
Wow. Um, we did it for the four months and then our class closed. So I remember the director of partnerships at the time, the global director of partnerships reached out. First of all, my peer uh, classmates were, were just happy with the way I coordinated, kept encouraging people. You need to keep time. You know, look at your business with this angle. You know, it doesn't matter. Even if you don't have capital, this is good content, all those other things. So she reaches out and says, oh, we want to have another class. And would you mind helping us? set up that class. Now this was a volunteering thing. I was taking my learnings to my class, I mean to my business and then start doing it. So I said, yeah, I think I have a few hours. Remember this time I'm not in full employment. Yeah. I have a few hours I can help around. So yeah, she said, okay. So I said, she said, we'll come up with a little bit of a guideline, a contract to see this. And we are happy to give you a stipend like fuel, maybe airtime. I said, no worries. I always love to serve. I said, mm. ah, this is an opportunity for me to serve and then just see that others also get to know about Synapis. Mm -hmm. So I served for the first three months. Um, the teams, the global teams were happy with my work and then later they come back and they are like, oh Julie, we want to set up um, office in, in Uganda. I was like, oh excited. I had actually passed on that idea during our class. I felt like Ugandan entrepreneurs needed this other version of entrepreneurship training. Yeah. So um, they are like, yeah, I think we are ready. We want to open up in in Kenya, what would it what would it take? Now remember, I had previously worked for Barclays Bank and MTN, mm -hmm. so I'm like, oh, I could put something together to just see what this you know happens. So for me, that was not a problem. Put together a proposal, highlighted a couple of things, a small budget, and everything. And then you know uh, later, the global team approved and said, look for an office, recruit trainers, da da da, da all those things. So I was just doing it part time as well. Whoa. So after a period of time i'm like okay we have an office we have trainers we have uh, you know we went through the, that entire hr process uh, guys being interviewed by the global team local team i used to look for a couple of um, you know networks just asking people do you know someone who can do this and everything so you know long story short we set up an office and i again continued part-time helping them I, I advised them you need to get a program manager you need to get a country manager and all those all those other things uh, you need to get staff on board and then after some time you know my part-time now became can you add more hours can you do this and then until one time they came and asked oh julie we want you to give more time to this because they saw as passionate about it yeah. but I'd also I would say I had um, I think exceeded my standards in terms of that job so mm -hmm. yeah that's how I landed into being the country manager from volunteer program assistant program coordinator program manager and right now country director for awesome. Uganda Sinapi. awesome story congratulations Julie as in that's just they, they call it uh, what do they call it organic growth so to speak it's not something that you really forced something that just morphed into your path and uh, you grew with it. You're still growing with it. Mm, I, yeah, I think it's a great space to be in and it speaks more to, I would say, who I am. <laughs> yeah. Who yeah. is Julie, if someone asked you that question? Uh, you know, interestingly, uh, Lawrence, I'll laugh about that. If you had asked me this question a couple of years ago, yeah. I would have given you a, a different, different uh, a different answer. But let me tell you something that happened to me, I think, in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, so, like I said, I'm a lifelong learner, and yeah. I always look for opportunities to learn and grow. Mm -hmm. And I've also heard that um, you only pour from an overflowing cup, right? Mm -hmm. So, in 2015, um, I attended a leadership training conference in Joburg, mm. and the facilitator asked us to introduce ourselves, minus our job titles, mm. our position, our family relationships, and community definitions. Mm. So, you know, you, you should have had... You, actually, you should have been in that room. It was full of respected CEOs, founders, great companies, great leaders. But for a moment, it was like a session where we were defending our PhD thesis. We Whoa. all went quiet. 
we are like oh my goodness so for me like i'll tell you in 2015 is when i discovered who i am mm. and the answer i'm going to give to you and that answer came from that learning um you may have noticed as well that when people tell us that's how we define ourselves we say i'm a mother i'm a daughter i'm the country director sinapis and all those other things yeah. but from that day the learnings for me are kind of changed so these days when you ask me who i am i will tell you julie is uh, actually of course i'll say my name is juliet casita yeah. i'm a carrier of joy i'm an encourager mm. i'm a listener and i'm a nature of an environment that allows all those things i've spoken about oh. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You are an encourager. You are a natural. So you you learned this in 2015. I actually, I in that conference, I discovered so. We, you know, we were using so many tools and exercises, mm. and that's what I discovered about myself. I discovered that I was a carrier of joy. I think literally today you would say an encourager. I discovered that I'm a motivator. Mm. I discovered that I'm a listener. I discovered that I'm a believer. But most importantly, I discovered that I'm a nurturer of environments that make people thrive. So if you've heard most of the times when I'm in spaces people say um what is it that you do and I say that um I'm a build, you know I provide this staircase for others to go up I'm a gap filler and then people are like what does that mean I say you know I provide an environment where Lawrence when I meet Lawrence Lawrence should be able to get to the first step and then along the way other people will come up but Lawrence's ultimate goal should be getting to the top of where he needs to go so the staircase helps you and I'm that staircase builder Wow that's deep that's that's absolutely deep uh, Juliet So now I'm I'm guessing that you got really excited when this revelation came that you're a staircase builder you're a joy carrier you're an encourager right uh, at that moment yeah. in time it's like some kind of clarity right hmm. uh, do you do you envisage a situation where this changes as in uh, do you think at some point in time you will stop being who you are and put on another definition Mm, I think it's just the I would say that I don't think it changes but what I've come to believe you see what I highlighted there mm. are qualities that make up who I am yeah but they you know like they also show up in each of the roles that I, I am like I, I told you I would have said I'm the country director I'm a mother you know I'm the founder of Winpreneurs I'm a financial literacy trainer those are roles that I have you understand yeah. but now when you go back to the other area where as they said without that title without the positions without your family or the community who are you so for me I believe um it might literally look like it's changing mm-hmm. but it's just being able to distinguish um you know what what how do these qualities show up what is the combination of those qualities that gives me a distinction regardless of the environment that I'm in I'm not literally about to change from being an encourager mm. but when I pull all that together and I'm in a particular environment what you will you see more there are spaces where i'll go and i'll be more of a listener but there are also spaces that have been and i'm just providing a platform for yeah. others to yeah. grow yeah. yeah yeah okay juliet uh, being an encourager what 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 do you love the most about that um i think for me it's the the fruit that comes out of encouraging yeah and and the and the platform that uh you know uh before me when 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 i get to meet people that just need to be encouraged i'll start with the fruit yeah. uh which anyone would say you know when i encourage people generally what happens I've, there are people who have walked my way i will tell you that i have met depressed stressed discouraged attacked mm. and broken people 
or for, for too far long and any form of support rendered to them in providing this staircase that I've talked about mm. is usually a blessing and what I've seen is that many times you talk to them and after a period of time it encourages them, it actually increases their productivity levels mm -hmm. when I was starting on I mentioned that um, you know I'm passionate about people and their growth but most especially seeing the potential in them is is something that i usually want to focus on yeah. you know this is lawrence this is what uh, lawrence aspires to be mm. but what is it that lawrence has that he might even not be aware of that could actually get him into that space mm. so i'm just not looking at you but also the potential that you have towards this you understand the yeah. ability for you to grow up to your full potential so because my vision is usually around helping individuals realize not only who they are but who, who they are even in God, I'm sorry I'll bring that out because I'm a Christian mm -hmm. there is a totally different way of awareness and approach and for me the purpose is that when you begin to transform what you think into what you know, your actions will have no choice but to fall in place. Mm -hmm. So I've seen people's productivity increase, I've seen people who are about to leave their jobs starting to see a, you know, job satisfaction. I've seen people spark, you know, like creativity being sparked, yeah. innovation being sparked. Right now I'm in the space of, you know, nurturing entrepreneurs from idea stage to next growth. Mm. And, you know, you just spend some time talking to this person about this idea, giving them time, giving them, you know, being able to listen and you see creativity coming out. But the most important thing, I think, is being able to unleash purpose. Wow. and full potential in these people i usually say you need to live purposefully at the end of that day so i've wow. been able to see that wow that is absolutely deep because listening to you i hear you cutting two types of strata you're 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 ministering to or you're speaking to or you are actually encouraging the down and out mm -hmm. And at the same time, you're also encouraging those ones who are functional, yes, but they just need some kind of eyes being opened, you know, some kind of mm. other mindset so that they can be able to fulfill their potential. This is mm. absolutely deep. In, in, in your work, because you've talked about this being a, a faith-based thing, what do mm. you see in the faith uh, space that really needs to be upped in terms of encouragement because I do perceive sometimes we have a lot of empty words in the faith space oh. but no mm. um, tangible substance that can actually mm. transform someone basically talking mm. about the platform you're talking about have you seen that in the mm -hmm. faith in the faith space I think I see it every day, even here in Sinapis where I'm serving. Let me give you an example. And I'm just going, because we are talking faith, yeah. I'm just going to use a scripture that is going to open up this discussion. You said, what have we seen? I think most of what we are seeing is a transformation of mindset, but also a mindset that calls us to action, responsibility, and accountability. Mm. So I'm going to give you an example of how I've seen this in the work that we are doing here at Synapse. Mm. So I love to quote the scripture in Genesis 1, 28. <laughs> uh, that scripture says that then God yeah, it says that then God blessed them yeah. and God said to them, be fruitful, be fruitful mm. and multiply, mm. fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, mm. over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Mm. Now, I want you to just, uh, well, let's go back a little bit on that. Um, I've always told people that we all have moments when we know better but we don't do better not so yeah. for example i'll tell you you lawrence know you all, you actually appreciate value you appreciate purpose mm. you know 
But then I'll ask just one question. Mm-hmm. What stops you from pursuing that, you know, at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. Or if you have attempted to pursue it, then why are you just an average, not an excellent person? Mm-hmm. Okay? So the people that we are meeting, we are saying every day we've been given opportunities to choose to know what is good and right for us. You know, there are times of the day in our lives or whatever, when you know the discipline that you're supposed to have, you know, I'm supposed to keep time. I'm supposed to eat well. You know, I am supposed to get out of this comfort zone. In reality, you and me plus the listeners know that progress does not take place in the comfort zone, but we still find ourselves back in the comfort zone Mm -hmm. we've known that we need to be keepers of time redeemers of time but we still go and waste it you Mm -hmm. know we've known that we need to take care of our lives and we don't do it so the question has always been now that we know these things why aren't we basically doing these things and it goes back it's just that people know but they don't know any better so when you come to transform that mindset when you place yourself as the facilitator as the nature of them, the environment mm. then there are certain things you're going to do um uh, i told you forgive me i still need to use scripture no, you will. <laughs> it's okay it's actually allowed <laughs> Yeah, because when I speak faith, I want to speak about the faith that um, I, I know better. Yeah. So Proverbs, I think, 11, 14 says, I will, I will quote the message version. It says that people lose their way without wise leadership or counsel, which mm. is the encouragement. Mm. But a nation succeeds and stands in victory when it has many good counselors or encourage us to guide it you know mm. so i don't like i said i don't want to sound like a preacher but this scripture is actually a game changer do you realize that it's people leading to nations so you lawrence you're a nation but so many people don't know that you know so it's a mindset thing so and it's it's saying if you don't get wise counsel or encouragement your lives are stake, but it's not only your life as Lawrence, all our lives, because it is now a nation. You have not come to a realization that you are a nation. Yeah. So we are asking, do you seek encouragement, you as a person, having realized that I'm a nation? Do you listen to that encouragement and implement that good counsel given to you? Mm-hmm. Many times the answer might be in counseling and encouragement, but you are not doing that. But then also, away from the awareness, which now encouragement does, that bringing that awareness of, you might have known, but you need to know better. It is also placing you in that environment where I'm helping you build confidence. You understand? Mm. Build confidence in the sense of saying, okay, this is what faith has said that you are known by God. What does it mean when Jeremiah says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Help that person transform from just seeing it as a scripture, as a saying, to how it literally happens in their everyday life. Mm. And that is not the end of the game. The game is bringing this person to say, you have a place to play. Mm. It is not just listening to the scripture, but guess what? It is that which you know that you will work upon. Mm. So this is what it means. If you know that the scriptures say that the Lord alone knows the plans that he has for you, it means that God is not just wondering about his plans for you, but he's also expecting you to be able to bring those plans into purpose by seeking counsel, by getting to know what is it that I need to do. He, he's given you the idea. Go to Lawrence and say, this is the idea I have. How do I take it to the next level? Yeah, that is absolutely deep. It is absolutely deep. I really do appreciate that. But then, Juliet, you hear uh, very many people on social media and even in life scoffing Mm. at... That's why I actually called us encouragers. But when you talk about motivational speakers, you hear a lot of scoff towards those Mm. people where do you think that one comes from you know just after explaining that depth of where the motivation is supposed to come from and then you hear people talking Mm. about motivational speakers are fake and so on where do you think that mindset comes from and is it necessary for people to have that kind of a mindset yeah it's it's all about perspective lawrence and um let me tell you one thing 
The Bible says that we all perish because of lack of knowledge. Yeah. So I I don't blame you know they they are they are literally occurrences and practices that have happened among certain motivators that actually make us literally yeah scope them. You know when those things I hear I I had the 500 shootings. <laughs> then I turned them, you know, some, yeah. something's really, it's encouragement, but far-fetched, but also turning into comedy. Mm. But one of the things I'll tell you, for me, I think it is going back to when you don't know any better. And the reason that is happening is because, again, I, I usually tell people encouraging or encouragement is creating and offering awareness. So, and that's why I'm going to focus a lot on when you are not aware, you will perish. These people that are coming to you to talk to you many times, like for me, the people who have encouraged me, I've talked about Joanne. She's one in one of those places where I was encouraged on this journey. But you know what she did? She just offered a safe space and yeah. environment to help me attack my insecurities head on. So the people that ma many times that will, you know, uh, maybe negate the fact of motivators, they are just unsure and they have insecure areas of their lives. Some yeah. of those insecure areas are happening because we are not aware. We don't know. It's a case of ignorance. Yeah. But the more you get exposed, you are actually able to even distinguish between liars motivators, comedians and actual encouragers yeah, because so all of them are there of, exactly but you know I've had people who I, I keep telling people that many people give me you know um, counsel yeah mm. but um, you know sometimes there is counsel that comes your way and you're just like this is not authentic I love to build confidence but that does not build my confidence yeah. because confidence is the result of not only thinking good thoughts but also knowing truth and allowing the truth to change the way you show up in the world and improve your interactions with others yeah. so many times you give me counsel but because i'm aware because i've been in spaces that allow me to uh, deal with these these uncertainties and insecurities i am able to distinguish between a comedian and an encourager yeah I see, I see. It's like you are you are a practitioner of the encouragement itself, so you're able to know fake and real. Yeah, I think as it, sometimes it might be hard if you if someone is just you know um, getting into the spaces, it might be hard. But um, again, on the other angle, I say because I'm a believer that you know it 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 takes that moment of of. I would say awareness, awareness. What, what is it? Are you even clear on what you want? I don't know if you've seen on social media, um, Lawrence, you see people flying over every other thing. That lack of focus. This is here, someone is flying. This has to be done. Did you know? Yeah. It's just, sometimes I don't blame. They, they just don't know any better. And that is why we are here, to help people not just know, but know what is right and fit for where God has called them to be. Because what is right for you, Lawrence, is not right for me. Mm. We, are, we are unique in our own ways. Exactly. Okay. So that, that, does that mean that when you are encouraging me, <laughs> you will not encourage me the same way you are going to encourage Maria, for example, right? Mm, many times, yeah, because like you said, we, we are all unique, but it also depends also on the goal. There are people who will come your way, um, like recently I was talking to a young lady yeah. who had just realized that she's been created to produce fruit mm. and uh, we were just talking about that same, same scripture that I mentioned about that uh, sometimes when, when people are being told uh, that be fruitful and multiply in our cultural context people are thinking about making babies <laughs> mm. but ideally we are just saying you know it is multiplication is you being in, in a state, a perpetual state of production where you just take what God has given you, plant it and allow it to produce over and over again. And someone has to make a decision that there is some fruit 
that cannot remain on watch. I have to be to distinctively look at you, Lawrence, and say, this is what Lawrence has been called, has been given to plant. How can I help Lawrence plant that and allow it to produce the fruit that Lawrence uniquely has been called to do? So I come on this other side as an encourager, as a facilitator, to help you keep a watch on that. Yeah. So I take the role of letting you know what decisions you need to do, and together we start watching that fruit. But remember, much as I said we are all seed, we are uniquely set up. Some seeds are apples, wow. others are mangoes, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Whoa. So let me ask you this, Juliet. As an encourager, what are some of these practices that you use to always give out of the overflow? As in you prepare yourself, how do you sharpen yourself uh, so much so that you are always encouraging? Mm, there, are, there are different ways. Um, if you've probably followed me for some time, I think... If literally, if it's not every month or every quarter or every year, every quarter I'm doing a certain course, mm -hmm. I am doing a certain learning, um, the people that are part of the Winpreneurs platform mm -hmm. that also started as, which is now a full entity and community, but started as a, a WhatsApp encouragement group, um, will, tell, will tell you that... Um, um, I literally, I think uh, until this year where I've had so many trainings to do, but I'm reading, I'm usually reading two books a month. Mm -hmm. So I, I get to read a lot. Uh, reading has really, really helped me keep abreast with what is happening. I'm also in a unique position, like I told you. Um, if, if you are a country manager of, of an entity and especially in the spaces of entrepreneurship, you need to be knowing what is happening in these spaces. Mm. So I read a lot um, and I, I, I read a lot of self-help but also um, other spaces. Then like I told you, always looking for trainings. Um, I've been privileged to work with people that um, are passionate about my professional development so I take a lot of courses but even with Without the people personally, I have been able to enroll myself in so many trainings and many leadership, any areas. I invest in being better and learning. Um, then thirdly, um, thirdly, I told you that I'm a community builder and yeah. a gap filler. Mm. So that means that um, uh, when I'm building community, I need to build networks. Community thrives on networks. Yeah. So I'm a part of many thriving and I would say communities that um, uh, my vision fit and my mission fit and in those spaces I'm able to learn from others I'm able to learn from you, other people get to see what is it that works, what doesn't work you know they say that in the multitude of many mm -hmm. there lies the council mm -hmm. so yeah I am, I am part of many networks that have been able to uh, also uh, help me improve my skills, my experience, and the aspirations that I have. Some of them are places that hold me accountable on who I am, but also who I'm becoming. Mm. And then um, what else? I think, yeah, like I said, that network also becomes a part of, um, I'm strong on social capital. Yeah. Um, and its benefits generally for life and what it has to offer. Yeah, so, so those are some of the things that are, there are spaces that allow me to learn a lot and whatever I learn, because I said I'm a staircase builder, I don't want to be at the top alone. I have to carry everyone along with me to the, to the top. Um, whatever I learn from those spaces, I bring back to every other person, willing, mark the word, willing yeah. to go onto the staircase because oh. sometimes some people are not willing mm -hmm. so if you're willing and you're looking to see the best that god has placed in you mm -hmm. i am always able to take you on that journey i hear you uh, speaking of god where do you rate i mean uh, how do you see the synergy between spirituality and encouragement 
Mm-hmm. There is there is a lot of of it because for me it even goes back to okay where where is the anchor where yeah. is the source yeah yeah I told you many times okay for Christians it's our faith in God for non Christians it's also I usually tell people every other being subscribes to a superpower yeah for some people that superpower is maybe a cup an animal I don't know about that but. Yeah the anchor of that superpower and many of those things drive our values you know so that's like for me i will use my example the values that i hold on to are coming from a space of my spirituality and what i am anchored in what um, i believe and those values are what now drives i'll give you one of the values is just stewarding resources actually let me share this with you of yeah. recent have been telling for that um god has called me to give life and for me this is what life means that number one, i give of my labor sometimes it's just my labor the skill that i have at hand whatever i have learned is what i'll give mm. uh, in other areas i give of my influence that is i i give of my influence right now at synapis I have that influence there in winpreneurs, in all these other places where I'm on, on different boards, on different spaces. I bring that influence and I'll use it to be able to support someone. Mm-hmm. And then I give of, there are spaces where I give of my finances, mm-hmm. literally having to have to bring physically to say so and so needs this help and I'll give of my finances. And then lastly, I give of my experience. So there are places that have been God has blessed me to work in multiple countries God has blessed me with exposure to different cultures different networks great minds out there and there are experiences that are picked out of that I will give a bit So when you look at some of those particular values I believe in stewarding resources well and because of that I've chosen to give life that way if God has given me time I'll use time to benefit you if he has given me finances i want to use them to benefit you if he has given me an experience and a particular skill because they are qualifications i got as i studied they are experiences i've had in the numerous companies that i've worked with and i'm i'm literally not bragging but i'm happy about where i've worked before because there were great companies mm-hmm. that built even that kind of culture organizational culture that i have as uh, both personal but organizational so i'm willing to give of that but that goes back to my spirituality which i said which comes with certain values mm-hmm. values of stewarding well values of uh, integrity you know values of um, of teamwork so the values i hold are actually coming from a space of my spirituality but then now coming back to the encouragement uh. Awesome, awesome stuff. So, is, is there a particular bias that you do have on the kind of people that you encourage? Uh, is it like, can I say, are you called to encourage a particular group of people, or uh, you cut across? I there are spaces I think where I've just been so particular. Okay, I don't want to call it a bias, mm-hmm. but um, I think out just coming out of my culture, background, and upbringing, mm-hmm. I have a soft spot for women mm-hmm. <laughs> and children. And sometimes my friends are saying, "So where are the men?" Mm-hmm. And this is how I address it. I say, for every woman and child I know. There is a father, there is a brother, there is a husband, and you know. So every time I'm 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 engaging the women, I know there are men out there. I might not directly get into the spaces of the men, but guess what? They, when they come my way. I definitely will look out for them but I have a spot, a soft spot I would say mm. for uh, women and especially women that desire to unleash that god given potential in them I have a soft spot for that mm. um I on the other hand I'll say the reason why I say that it's also general I've literally I've 
uh, all my life I've worked in the technology spaces in the bank and in MTN so I literally have worked more with men <laughs> there are some teams where I would be the only lady so that again puts me in a space where I've, I've been an encourager to most of the men that I've worked with I take off time to speak to them listen to what is happening in their in their spaces they are car- you know growth plans sometimes even what is happening in their marriages especially the young adults that are looking to explore into that space i see so juliet what exactly do you use to build these stairs and uh, to encourage people do you have you know when someone talk about talks about encouragement for the most part people look at you with a microphone speaking to people is that all there is what tools do you have that you use to encourage these women and these children and some men hmm. the tools are uh, literally sometimes i would say okay let me say the first tool yeah. <laughs> is the word is the word that i know yeah and um Let me tell uh maybe before I share the tools let me talk about the levels of encouragement that yeah. I look at as yeah. I as I speak to my team. Mm-hmm. Number one is that you encourage yourself first. That is the oh. first level oh. of encouragement. Awesome. You know however much I come and encourage you they this far that I can go. So the first level is encouraging yourself. Mm-hmm. So at that point there are a couple of them some some of them are like uh, personality uh, psychometric tools that we have on over the internet mm-hmm. but also in my experience of of just doing this I've come up with uh, what I would say customized templates that help me look deeper into people's personalities look deeper recently I just got a peace index you know a framework that just uh tries to conquer people's chaos mm-hmm. so that they can find fulfillment no imagine something like that and these are things like i said that we perish because of lack of lack knowledge, of knowledge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we Yeah we don't know that these things uh you know uh are um, literally written. yeah so and that came out of just being uh, a part of a leadership training where they were asking us how peaceful are you and sometimes we don't so do you ever imagine that how you can you can't you you can literally bring your encouragement and your passion but when the person is under chaos Mm-hmm. chances are that they are going to struggle a lot so that's why i said the first level is encourage yourself mm-hmm. but then the second level where i said again it is the word mm-hmm. the bible says that david encouraged himself in the lord mm-hmm. so that's the other level because i said i'm a believer so it comes from self then i get you to that level because me as julie there's just so much i can do mm-hmm. the, the 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 bit of the word the bit of the tools also coming come from the spirituality that you mentioned for some people like i said who is their lord who is the that superpower where is the anchor mm-hmm. uh, sometimes people find their anchor in their spouses we will not judge them here but we are saying yeah if that is where the anchor is then find that but most especially now for us christians we say you encourage yourself in the lord yeah. and when that has happened then we get to the encouragement from others or even to others mm. so those are the three levels and each of those levels requires a different tool when i'm in, when you're encouraging yourself there is a different tool for example if that's where i've talked about the peace index yeah. um personality tests and you know culture back we, we go back and even say what are the uh, the underlying conditions you've seen right now people are going through a mental breakdown mm. then we are like what could have caused that it could have been parents you know most of the people that come my way uh they never mention you know any other people are just like oh my parents never told me this mm-hmm. and none of the things by the way why i'm passionate about uh, encouragement is that for me it came so easy the reason people say i'm a very confident person i have high self esteem is because i grew up in a home where i was told i could be anything mm-hmm. i ever wanted to be mm-hmm. and my parents would come back and tell me that anything is two things the bad side which is the negative side mm-hmm. and the positive side so they gave me an opportunity to choose and whatever i chose 
they would let me know that I could be that. So I gained confidence because people came and gave me all these tools that made me believe that, guess what, I'm a superhero. Up to this day, they still encourage me, you can do it. You can. Sometimes I actually feel like, oh, no, I can't. I have cheerleaders. The family comes up. My husband will come and say, by the way, you can become the CEO. By the way, you can become the regional director. By the way, you know, that encouragement it helps you build the confidence. So that can be also a tool, the platforms that people are in. Can we help people know where are the distractors of that encouragement? What are the underlying conditions that are even taking them away from building that confidence? Mm. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Did you mention peace index? How is it something that someone can easily get? <laughs> Yes, there's actually a book that has been written by Jeremy Kuhu, is it Kubesek? I, I can text you this. Uh-huh. He has a full book that talks about the Peace Index. I think there's also an online version, yeah. but the online version is kind of, uh, I think, uh, edited a bit. But um, yeah, Jeremy talks about a five-part framework to conquer chaos and find fulfillment. So I went through that particular training because I love, I, I, like I said, that I help people live life uh, purposefully. And in life purposefully, we usually say there are certain things you need to agree to, but you also need to protect the environment um, that is going to cushion or fuel your passion, but defend your purpose. So the Peace Index talks about the things that need to protect the environment you need to be in. What habits do you need to develop? Which friendships do you need to nurture? Which spaces do you need to be in? Because like I told you, some of those can be killers of your potential. Yeah. Did you say but, Jeremy? Um, Jeremy who? The spelling is J E R E M I E. Then the other name, the other uh, names is K U B I C E K. Okay. Uh, probably, Lawrence, when I'm back in Kampala, just give me a call. I have the book I can be able to just share with you so that you can see it okay. as well. Okay. So, Juliet, uh, perhaps there is a budding encourager who is listening to us having this conversation and they're wondering what can I do to get started uh, what even shows that I have this gift or this calling or this leaning towards encouraging others what would you advise such a mm. one um, many times um, I tell people that um, sometimes we don't have to know, we don't have to be uh, in know of the entire picture. Like even when it comes to our purpose, yeah. like I don't need to know the end result. All I need to do is to take the step yeah. and, you know, and, and start the, the, the journey. So one of the things I tell people it starts with an awareness, but yeah. also a burning desire. Do I like I said, encourage self. Mm-hmm. Are you in a space where you feel you need support? Mm-hmm. You need to be encouraged. Because when you are that space, then we can be able to say, okay, this is who you could talk with. These are the spaces you're in. Mm-hmm. So if there's this space of vulnerability where I will sit and say, I need help. I think most people that have met or who come my way, what took them long was not being able to get to that space where you say, you know what, mm. I need some help. And I'm sorry to say sometimes it happens a lot with our other counterparts, the male. Mm. You you just want to be a man, you know. Sometimes I, I say if you mm. need <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I say if you need to cry, cry. Mm. It's okay. Mm. Yeah. After you you finish crying, wipe yourself and say, what next? So, allow, first of all, get to be at that space. But also the second thing, allow to be equip, equipped. Mm-hmm. Allow to get into, you know, like I said, when you ask for, for support, allow to be equipped. Um, I keep telling people, there's this scripture that I read and every time it scares me, but also gives me hope. Mm-hmm. The Bible says that um, a, a man of skill, um, show me a man of skill and he will not serve before unknown men. Certain versions call them obscure, obscure men. men. Other versions, 
Yeah, other versions. I think it is passion translation that actually makes it clear. It says small men. Mm-hmm. Now it says when you have a skill, when you have a craft, when you have, you know, you will not serve before those people. Mm-hmm. But it says you serve before kings. You know, who yeah. doesn't want to serve before kings? We all want to do that. But listen, the condition is you have to be of a skill. So ask yourself, what is that skill? Or if you don't know, there are spaces that have been told. Lawrence is here are helping you find that and all that. Get into that space. Find what that skill is. And then nurture that skill. Equip that skill. Because when you do it, you will not serve before small men, yeah. but kings. So there is a space of investing in yourself. There is a space of, I tell people, there is hard work. Yeah. You know, these things are not just you sit back and everything. There is hard work. People who have been able to fuel their passions, they have taken personal responsibility. Not yeah. com- You know, I tell people that fueling your passion is not a community event. It becomes a community event when you're getting awards. But the underlying cause here, the yeah. underlying thing is that you need, some, some, sometimes it's more days of engagement and less sleep and all these other things, but put in the hard work. Because when you diligently put in that hard work, you will be rewarded. So be in a space of identifying, I need help, seek support and help, build a certain skill. Because when you have that skill, you will definitely not serve before small men. And go ahead over that skill. I believe... For me, I, like I said, I, I share what is best known to me that has been the approach. Okay. I'm not yet there. I'm still becoming, yeah. but I would love to see that happen among many people. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, Juliet, if someone who is listening to us would like to reach out to you and to be encouraged by you, where do you think they can find you? Are you open to just about anybody reaching out to you? Um, yeah, there were times when it was, you know, uh, let us be please come in and everything. Um, as the, the nature of the work increases, then we find we have less time and everything. But I'm happy to help as much as I can. So people usually reach out in different spaces. There are people who have reached out for the business community through Synapse. Mm-hmm. There are communities that have reached out to me through Winpreneurs Africa, a collaborative community platform that we started to support mm-hmm. those that would want to start businesses or grow businesses, especially women, there are people that have reached out through my mentorship programs. So yeah, I'm happy to help. I think for me any opportunity that would help someone really really become who God has called them and thrive, I'm happy to help. Okay, so how do they get to you? Um, Many avenues um, you can use if, if you want to use the approach of Synapse. I can be reached on email. My email is very simple, Juliet at Synapse. Synapse is S-I-N-A. Mm-hmm. Uh, P-I-S dot O-R-G. So mm-hmm. Juliet at Synapse dot O-R-G. You can give me a call. I am on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really, really happy to co- connect with each of you. LinkedIn is Juliet Casita. You you can't miss to connect with me. Um, if if uh, they are coming from the angle of uh, Winpreneurs, yeah, we also have info at winpreneurs.org. Okay. Thank you so much, Juliet, for getting uh, some time one hour of your moment just to share with us and just to encourage us and we are so blessed by your wisdom we're so blessed by your your knowledge and the revelation that you're giving us and we pray that you continue shining even as you increase like like you've said you are still becoming and uh, we are proud of what you're doing so thank you so much for having this conversation with me your friend um what's her name um, your friend Joan Mugenzi if you go and check out uh, episode number 1237 you'll find her story there she, she's the one who opened up this uh, conversations for okay. encouragers in the month of uh, November episode number 1237 on Life Signatures Radio
Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Lawrence, and thank you for providing this platform to the rest of the community. I pray a blessing of abundance and increase over you as well. Thank you so much, Juliet, for those kind words. Until next time, bye-bye, Juliet. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.